Hello, welcome to everyone in this video. This is the part 3 for the solution of Calcutta University question for semester 4 on the paper CC8 which is mathematical methods 3 of the year of the question 2022. Already two part we completed. This is the question paper you can see. Uh, this in part 1, in part A or in, in, in part 1 already we discuss this question number 1. Part 1 we already uh, discuss question number 1 that is 1 to G. Then part 2 we discuss this uh, question number 2 and question number 3 already discuss. In this uh, session that is part 3 we will be discuss question number 4 and question number 5 will be discuss in this video and the upcoming session will be continue question number 6, 7 and 8. Okay. So if you want to watch the previous lecture you will go to the description box link are given there. Question number 4 which says that space time coordinate of a pair of events in an intern in, in, in of in an inertial frame S are these. So if you if you as an inertial frame S uh, where two events are occurring is this find the separation of two events in the inertial frame S prime in which two events are simultaneous. Uh, that means another frame which is S prime where uh, you need to find out the separation of these two events in that frame okay and also find the speed uh, with respect to uh, uh, speed of the s prime with respect to s with the matrix 1 minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 you, the separation of the events in frame s is delta s then delta s square equal to c square t1 minus u2 square this one here this take as positive and this three taken as negative and finally you obtain this one which is negative this is the space like point okay now you know that is the delta s that is the separation between two events is invariant under the Lorentz transformation so the separation of these two events is s prime is delta s prime equal to delta s which is nothing but root 3 a by 2 if you square root of this one will be that one so this is the separation between this and the speed uh, with respect of s prime with respect to is nothing but delta x by delta t delta is the separation of 2a minus a and delta t is the separation this one you finally obtain the speed of the system s prime with respect to s which is c by 2 next question says an inertial frame s prime is moving at a speed c by 2 a from the uh, another inertial frame s so this is the rest frame s and this is the another inertial frame s prime which is the speed c by 2 with respect to s along the x x prime axis an observer uh, from s prime a particle is moving with c by 2 in y direction y prime direction so this is the particle which is moving along the y prime direction c by 2 so uh, the coordinate with respect to s prime is x y z t and the corresponding y with respect to s prime plane is x prime y prime z prime t prime and the corresponding velocity uh, with respect to s prime is ux uy uz and with respect to s s prime vx prime ui prime uz prime okay according to the inverse lorentz transformation uh, you know that is x equals to gamma x prime plus vt prime y equal to y prime z equal to z prime t equal to gamma t prime plus v x prime by c square here the x prime uh, ux prime equals to 0 uh, u y prime equals to c by 2 uz prime equals to 0 then you will be find out um, velocity ux uy uz with respect to s you need to find out the speed of the particle as seen from the s so ux is nothing but dx by dt and dx is nothing but you can calculate it dx is equals to gamma dx prime plus v dt prime and uh, dt dt is nothing but gamma uh, within bracket dt prime v by c square dx prime so put these two equation in this expression and divided by dt prime you will be obtained this one and dx dx prime by dt prime is nothing but ux prime so finally obtain this expression which is nothing but c by 2 so ux equals to will be obtained c by 2 similarly u y will be obtained the similar process you just check out this one uh, which is root 3 by 4 c and uz equals to 0 as dz prime by dt prime equals to uz which is uz prime which is 0 uz prime equals to 0 
so so finally obtain this uh, velocity expression along x y z will be like that and the magnitude will be root 7 by 4 c so i think clear about the solution of this question right go to the next one which says consider three inertial frame s s prime s double prime s prime moving with speed s with respect to along the x x prime so this is s s prime s double prime s prime with velocity v with respect to s s double prime is moving with respect to s prime along x prime with the velocity so this v prime with respect to s prime and with respect to s this velocity is v double prime okay so speed of s prime with respect to s is v and speed of s double prime with respect to s prime is v prime and with respect to s is v double prime now it's written here by velocity addition theorem you know v double prime is nothing but dx by dt and dx is gamma dx prime and so on so if you just uh, follow up this equation which already discussed in previous question and finally you obtain this one okay uh, you know that is beta equal to vc so v equal to beta c and v prime equal to beta prime c and v by c equals to beta so v double prime is like that now you will be obtain gamma double prime by gamma prime gamma and you know this expression gamma gamma prime gamma double prime use this expression and calculate this uh, process just follow up this process uh, you will be obtain this expression so finally you will be obtain. so i think you understand the process the method just follow up this equation okay i think you can uh, you got it next question particle of mass m initially addressed decay into two pieces of each mass small m find out the speed of each particle so this is capital M with speed 0 and the small m with speed V1 and V2 considering with theta 1 and theta 2. So if you component along the x axis, this is x axis and this is y axis. So this is M V1 cos theta 1, this is M V2 cos theta 2 and this is M V1 sin theta 1, this is M V2 sin theta 2. So by momentum conservation along x will be like that and along y will be like that. So if you just divided this one, it will be obtained theta 1 equals to minus theta 2. That is magnitude of these two angles are equal. And if you coiling and adding, it will be obtained V1 and V2 equal. So the speed uh, of these two particles are equal with the same uh, magnitude of angle. They will be emitted. Okay. Next, a particle of mass m whose total energy is twice its rest mass energy collide to an identical particle which is at rest. So this is a, a particle M whose energy, total energy 2 m naught c square. This is rest mass energy, twice of the rest mass energy. Another particle is rest, so its energy will be m naught c square as these two are identical. After collision, after collision, they stick together. So this, after collision, they form a uh, single particle and find the mass of the resulting composite particle and what is the velocity so you need to find out the mass of this resulting composite particle and this velocity of this particle by the energy equation you know e square equal to p square c square m naught square c to the power 4 so the, uh, at the initial pi square c square uh, equals to this p p i square c square equal to e square minus this one so for particle which is moving the total energy to m naught c square so you will be obtain the initial uh, momentum of the moving particle this is a moving particle initial momentum of moving particle okay which is which is moving and the final momentum will be conserved as like that uh, by momentum conservation final momentum will be like that and the final energy is nothing but the energy addition of these two particle 3 m naught c square so the rest mass of the composite particle if m naught then you will be easily find out this expression ef square equals to like that uh, will be obtained finally this value of m naught will be like that okay this is the um, rest mass of the composite particle m0 capital m0 which is root root 6 small m0 small m0 rest mass of the moving particle m now uh, if you uh, you know the uh, total energy is like that so m c square equal to this one so m equals to 2 m0 and you know the formula of m with respect to m0 is like that from where you will be obtain the velocity of the moving particle here one particle is moving this is speed v one particle is moving and another is rest this v equals to zero small v equal to zero and the composite particle capital m moving with velocity capital v 
so by energy conservation m c squared the composite particle energy equal to 3 m not c square so you will be obtained m 3 by 2 so, um, because small m equals to m small m not equals to m equal to m by 2 right so this is 3 by 2 small m this is the mass of the composite particle as you know a capital m equals to 3 m not m not equals to root 6 m not so if you put this expression you will be obtained the velocity of the composite particle okay m not equals to m by 2 obtained from this relation m not equals to m by 2 here use obtained using this relation so this is the mass of the composite particle and this is the velocity of the composite particle clear so i think you do this calculation next one next question says so that under lorentz transformation p mu p mu is invariant under uh, uh, invariant where p mu is for momentum of the particle used as matrix so this is the for momentum that is ma rest mass into velocity and put this velocity expression c v x v i v z so p naught which is first term is nothing but m naught gamma c put the value of gamma you will be get this is m m c so this is e by c p1 is nothing but m naught gamma v x put this value of gamma you will be get m v x that is p x similarly p2 is p y p3 is p z so momentum for vector is e by c p x p y p z so if you dot product this is the dot product scalar value actually this is magnitude square of this scalar value scalar value will be p naught whole square minus p1 square p2 square p3 square so if you put this value p naught p1 p2 p3 you will be finally obtain this expression m naught square c square so you will be get the um, which which is invariant on the Lorentz transform because m naught and c both are the constant this cannot be changed under Lorentz transform so, so this is invariant under Lorentz transform so, so i think clear about the solution of this question this is all about me this is my contact details and this is my youtube channel details so take care we'll meet you in the next video as soon as possible thank you